Indeed. Should this game determine league MVP? Wow, that's a tough one, but I'm going to say yes. And the reason I'm going to say yes is because Antonio Brown has been absolutely sensational. Carson Wentz is hurt. Uh, after Russell Wilson looked the way he looked, throwing three interceptions just uh, last week, it comes down to Tom Brady and Antonio Brown as far as I'm concerned. Not to say that Russell Wilson is omitted from the conversation or Carson Wentz for that matter because if everybody is average or below average the remaining three weeks, I'd still be a proponent of giving Carson Wentz MVP based on his performance for the first 13 games of this season. But I will tell you that Tom Brady uh, was in the lead for me anyway. And if he performs like Tom Brady is capable of performing in a game of this magnitude and he can continues to shine for the rest of this regular season, then he'd get my vote. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I will admit that I'm a bit reluctant to give it to a wide receiver uh, because, again, you're only as good as the quarterback throwing the football to you. Just ask the Denver Broncos with Emmanuel Sanders and, and, and Demarius Thomas. I mean, or ask various other guys that can't, you know, or, or that can't, that whose quarterback rather can't get it done. But if you're Antonio Brown, I'm not going to say a regular game, but my Lord. What if Antonio Brown goes out and catches 12 to 15 passes for 250 plus yards and the Steelers clinch the number one seed in the AFC uh, with this victory? What if that happens? Then I got to look at that strong and hard, which I will. But right now, so I would to answer the question, I would say this game could very well determine the MVP. And if both perform the way that I anticipate they can perform, then it would be warranted for, to say such a thing. This if game a, B, will not or certainly should not determine MVP. First of all, Tom Brady's right in the mix as he always is. This is why he's the greatest player of all time, right? Because he's right there. He ain't running away with it, but he's having another great season. As is Russell Wilson, by the way. Russell Wilson thrown 29 touchdowns, 3,500 yards, and he hasn't had the personnel to protect him at all. And he has given no, he has no one on the team who he can hand the ball to to run. Not at all. And he's got no defense. And the three interceptions last week, come on. Those were like punts. That's what great quarterbacks do when you can't move the ball against a ferocious defense. You take some shots down the field, and if it's, if it's picked... You know, okay, fine. It's like you punted the ball. In fact, Russell Wilson did that right, if there's such thing as, a, as the good kind of interception, and then in the fourth quarter lit it up. Look at Tom Brady, what happened to him when he didn't have his personnel last week. He got beat, and it wasn't by a ferocious defense. It was by the Miami Dolphins. That ain't the Jaguars' defense because he didn't have his personnel. I'm not blaming Brady because a lot of times he does make lemonade out of lemons. But last week he couldn't because he didn't have the personnel. That's a situation Russell Wilson finds himself in every week, and he's still in the mix. And if Russell Wilson guides this undermanned team to the playoffs, he should be MVP. The other problem with saying is between Antonio Brown and Tom Brady, guys, is Le'Veon Bell's right in the mix. That splits the vote in Pittsburgh. Look, Le'Veon Bell is leading the league in rushing, is leading the league in yards, and in yards from scrimmage among running backs and has nine touchdowns, rushed for seven and caught two, and is the best player on Pittsburgh, and that includes Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger. And it was his absence last year in the AFC Championship game that was glaring and clearly cost Pittsburgh. Not that they would have won with him, but they wouldn't have gotten beaten like that with him. So even if Antonio Brown has a huge game and a Pittsburgh win, who's to say Le'Veon Bell isn't the MVP in that case? Either way, I don't think, I'm to think say. this game determines MVP. I'm to say. I'll tell you, Max, you know what, you, what? You're right. Russell Wilson doesn't have a running game. Russell Wilson doesn't have an offensive line. But I'll tell you something Russell Wilson does have, five losses. Now, it's a team game, and you don't saddle every loss on every one individual player. And in, in an MVP debate, let's not pretend like we're talking about one guy being trash or one, one guy not being good. Russell Wilson has been amazing. But this MVP race, Stephen A., I don't think it is a tough question. It is a two-man race, and as far as I'm concerned, it can be decided this weekend. Now, it's most likely in Tom Brady's pocket as we speak. I mean, Tom Brady, despite many predictions, um, has had an absolutely outstanding historical season at the age of 40. He leads the league in yards. He's got 105 passer rating. He is the MVP. But Stephen A., if what happens, what you said could happen? If Antonio Brown goes for 12 for 200 or 12 for 150, you have to not only consider him, you got to start talking about giving him 
the MVP. I hate this idea that it's somehow a quarterback award. I understand why quarterbacks end up with it more than others, that they control the ball, they touch the ball more, they distribute the ball. I get it. I get it. But we can't pretend like other positions don't have major impacts on the field. And Max like Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell. Bell is great. Max, Le'Veon Bell is great. But I think anyone that's watched this, hey, by the way, this isn't Antonio Brown's best season. We all know that. He's not even controlling the most of any wide receiver in the league this year. It's something like 15% of the Steelers' hey, touches. And, and Fitzgerald has more. And, and Landry has more. But I got to tell you something. Anybody who watches the Steelers know that guy makes this team move. Brown is the major factor for this team. Well, let me 